Hello and welcome to the show. My name is Martia Umar. And just like always, Nigeria joined the rest of the world to mark the International Women's Day where issues of gender equality for sustainable development were raised. And that is breaking the bias, enabling women and the girl child to achieve their full potential. And this continued to resonate. In this episode of Law and Order, we will be looking at the plight of the girl child and the need to continue to use the court to challenge norms, religious beliefs, tradition, and even laws that affect this group of people. And to discuss this rights, or the rights of the girl child rather in Nigeria is Farouk Ibrahim Yahya, Esquire, just like they like to be called. I, 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 sometimes I find it difficult to put barista or you just use the Esquire because I've been warned you can't use barista and Esquire yes. at the same time. Yes, the truth of it is barista is not a title. Okay. So you shouldn't, Elijah shouldn't add it to his name, barista. So, so, and so, so the more. Esquire is better. The Esquire is better. All right. So yes. you've been doing a lot of um, advocacy surrounding yes. the girl child. And yes. like we have a conversation earlier, you said humanity first. And um, that kind of speaks a lot of volume. So, okay. Um, so there are lots of violations. The society thinks that it's just their views on the female child or the girl child in the society that's called violations that's the only form of violation sexual. yeah the sexual violations that's the only form of violation but there are lots of violations Definitely. that the girl child faces in the society can you take us through some of these veiled violations and the apex of that violation is emotional or you can call psychological trauma or abuse a lot of times the girl child faces this trauma because mm. of the mere fact that they were born as girls or female. Sometimes this trauma is caused by the fact that the father is not happy that he got a girl child and the mother is not happy because the father is not happy that she gave birth to a girl child. And this girl child is innocent. Hmm. She was not the one that determined her sex. And so a lot of times this abuse continues and a lot of times it comes to where they use emotional blackmail against the girl child and sometimes she grew up to be broken. Mm. And among these abuse is trafficking. The girl child is the victim of human trafficking the most, more than the male okay. child. Because a lot of time trafficking is due to maybe want for prostitution, house help and stuff like that. And who you mean the child labor? Yes, mm. child labor. So I, I feel like a lot of people do not know when uh, the age to employ uh, someone into their home. Uh, we see a lot of child labor here and there. Yes, the truth of it is we are always innocent. We are always ignorant of the law. Mm -hmm. A lot of times, even some lawyers, we don't, God forbid for us to know all the law, but we are, as lawyers, supposed to know where to find the law. Mm. But you know, sometimes, due to specialization and stuff like that, a lot of us don't know some of the tenants of the law. So you can also find even lawyers and well enlightened people preaching these tenants of the law. So that's how the cycle goes on. Mm. So majorly, one of the issues why we have this high increase in the girl child is the fact that a lot of us are not at home with the whole tenant of the abuses that constitute mm violation of the girl child rights okay so um the the girl child yes. now there's a law that protects the girl child right yes uh, what are some of these laws now we have as we said earlier the child right right okay. act and we have the VAP act which was enacted 2015 okay this that the VAP act was able to to widen the scope of the offense of rape okay because before, before the VAP Act, rape was only the penetration of the vagina. Mm. But now, oral sex and maybe insertion of object into the mouth or any opening in a female or male, that's one of the beauty of the VAP Act. It was able to widen the scope of what rape is. But we know it is mostly the girl child that suffers the issue of rape the most. Mm. So the VAP Act has been able to widen the scope and also make a way to protect the girl child. And 
most of our all the criminal laws we have in the country, one way or the other, they might not directly directly say this a girl child is protected, but the tenants, the provisions also applies to the girl child. Hmm. But the issue I see is the fact that it's when it comes to the enforcement of those law hmm. that we have issues. Yes, some of these law are there, but how well do we enforce? So that's where the problem really lies. Okay. Uh, you, you talked about the emotional and, and the psychological, psychological kind of trauma and that abuse. maybe the home or the society put the girl child through. Yes. And some time ago, I watched how a mother abused her child. I don't know if she's ignorant about it. Mm -hmm. Like you said, ignorant, ignorance of the law, even make the enlightened people in the society mm -hmm. uh, breach some of these tenants. So... That is evidence that daily and abysmally we see this right of the girl child being violated in the society. Mm. There have been a lot of advocacy lately. Uh, you know, there have been International Day for the Girl Child. There's International Day for the Women. A lot of days to create awareness. But we're still getting it all wrong. At what point do you think we got it all wrong? Mm, I feel we got it wrong when we lost the humanity in us. Mm. That's for me personally. Okay. Because the truth of it is, as a human, I shouldn't be related with someone before I can stand up for the right mm. of such a person. Now, for example, you're on you're in your car, you're driving home, and you see a car burning. You would, and if you have a fire extinguisher in your car, you would want to mm. assist. Help, yeah. That's humanity. In now, what you feel is a lot of times people have developed this phobia to speak out when the girl child are being right. Could you say it's phobia or the I don't care attitude no, in the society? The thing is, it could, you could give it any kind of connotation. Okay. Sometimes we might want to give it a soft landing. But I feel whether you use fear, non challenge I don't care attitude, the fact that we have failed to speak out is one of the reasons why this abuse continues even in this century of ours. Hmm. And the truth of it is, one major factor again that is promoting this abuse is saving the honor of the family. A lot of times, this abuse occurs within the family. Hmm. Uh, could you say a self-preservation yes. uh, lead to denial of some of these yes. violations? Yes, sometimes when this violation occurs, I'm like, please, if you say it out, the name of this family will be rubbed in the hmm. mud. Don't do this. She's your dad, she's your mother, your brother, your uncle, and stuff like this. And we bury the abuse. Hmm. And once some of these professionals know that if they do it, the fact that other members of the family will want to bury it due to, they want to save the honor of the family name, they keep on going, involving in this abuse. And that is why it has blown to a very large scale hmm. than what we used to know before. I could remember when I was still young, once you go to your uncle's house and stuff like that, people are always careful so that they will not say, ah, somebody, this person's child came to your place mm -hmm. and he was maltreated, stuff like that, because they won't want you to go and report to your dad or someone that, ah, I went to Susu person's house and this was how he treated, he treated me very bad. But the truth of it is, now we've lost some of these things. People don't even care. They don't care. Mm. They do realize that one of, like the example you just cited now, this is a mother mm. violating her own child. And if you trace it, it's possible even she herself, the mother, was violated. Mm. And so she just, you know, we're creating the same cycle. So I feel the thing is, we have to go back to where we lost it, and that's finding the humanity in us. Mm. We just have to remember that at first we are women. And when we have a nation where our women, the girl child is protected, she's independent, she has self esteem, she's confident. She can stand for herself. It you see it replicates in all sphere of that nation. Mm. Because like it or not, some of the majorly most of the virtues we imbibe 
we first learn them from our mothers. Mm. And so once we have a strong will mother, someone that is independent, someone that is upright, someone that has, that knows herself, that has that self esteem, it will be easy for her to inculcate sin in her children. Mm. You cannot give what you don't have. Exactly. You, you can't, can't give, give what you, what don't, you have. don't have. And no, uh, now we have um, the laws that you mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. protecting the rights of a girl in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. And um, we see that these rights are being violated on a daily basis. And you start to think, is it the judicial system in the country? What is the problem? And what can we do? How can we fix all of this? And I remember uh, when I was going through the Child Rights Act, I was doing some findings. I found out that some of the states domesticated the Child Rights Act and some didn't. So why do you think some states are finding it difficult to domesticate the Child Rights Act? Hypocrisy. Hypocrisy. Wow. That's deep. How do you mean? The thing is, some of these people that shout Child Rights Act, we are for it. They are just paying lip service to it. Hmm. When it comes to religious, okay, putting the platform that will make it easy for this right to be implemented or domesticated in those states, mm. that's where they start drawing back. Now, sometimes you see some civil society group organizing workshop awareness, and they invite some of our religious leaders, some of our traditional rulers, and people like this, and everybody in the face of the television we shout, yeah, I support this, I support that. But once it comes to where yeah, that support should be given, the drawback. Hmm. So most times they only pay lip service to it. And the drawback is some of these people are violators themselves. Okay. So it is just trying to see how they could manage their image in the media and like, yes, I support this. But once you dig deep, we discover that some of them are violators themselves and they know if they push for the domestication, it will catch up with them. And the law will definitely will catch, catch up. up and them. a lot of times, even when some of these laws are being domesticated, enforcement is also an issue. Again. Mm. So you see, they are still the same kind of person trying to, you know, prevent the successful enforcement of all this law. Mm. So the truth of it is, personally, I feel hypocrisy is the top. It's at the top of one of the reasons why some of these states have not been able to domesticate the child right and VAP law because people that are supposed to fight for it to be domesticated are a lot of times, in quotes, violators themselves. Mm. And the truth of it is, they don't want it. But just for them to have the acceptance of the media and some of the group and friends they have, they will just <laughs> pretend that, yeah, we are for this. While in How many states not. have domesticated mm, so far? I think it should be around 19, if I'm not mistaken. Or more than 20. I think more than around uh, We have some few states that few have states. not domesticated yes, uh, yes. the Child Rights Act. Yes. So now if we have a problem, I know that the law court is the hope of the common man. Mm. Am I correct? Yes. Okay, so, and there is a rights violation against a girl child. Yes. What happens? You did talk about enforcement, mm. um, the problem of enforcement, but it's better when we have domestication in a particular state. You, you just have it at the back of your mind that if this medium doesn't work, if this lawyer doesn't do his job, another person will. And in a state where we don't have domestication of this rights, what happens? Now, the truth of it is, even the Child Rights Act, the way we have it, is not a panacea to the problem itself hmm. completely. I feel foremost, we have to do the orientation of ourselves as a people. Because the truth of it is, even when the law is there, you have you need to have agents, you and I, that will ensure that we meet the letters of that law. Hmm. Where passing the law will not solve the problem. But where you have the law, a good law, and the agents, the people that are supposed to see to the enforcement of that law, 
are against the law itself. How do you get it to work? That's the big issue there. So what mm. section of the, the act now mm. are people finding it difficult? You are on the field. You yes. deal with but these the, matters all the time. Now, the truth of it is, let me cite an example. I was handling a case where someone abused some children, sodom in court. Mm. Now, the truth of it is, we were in court. I was in the prosecution. I was handling the case. And the father, I had a witness interview. Usually, before we go to court, we'll call the victim who, and all our witnesses. we we'll interview them, get the facts right, and know how we we'll proceed with them. Because sometimes they are children, so you know how to manage them in court. And for example, the case is coming up tomorrow, mm. Monday. Today, I had a meeting with the victim and their father. I think around 10, 11. By 6, I just called, court CC to remind them, remember what you're coming to court. You should be in court before 8. The response I got was, I won't be able to make it. You won't be able to make it? Yes. Court. What was yes. the reason he gave? He said he has forgiven the person. Oh. So, as such matters forgiven, because it's already registered. Now, that is why I'm court. saying now. The thing is, now we as lawyers, the court generally now, the court was not there when this crime happened. Mm. It is only the evidence you bring, in, bring to court that the court can now make a pronouncement on. All right, so we'll continue this conversation in a bit. Um, if you're just joining us, this is Law and Order on Trust Television. We'll go on a quick break, but we rest assured that we'll be back. Stay with us. Welcome back. It's still Law and Order on Trust Television. And today we're discussing the Child's Rights Act, but we focus on the rights of the girl child in the Nigerian society. And without a guest in the studio, I would say it's a he for she, somebody who puts humanity first. Yeah, somebody who has been advocating for the rights of the girl child in the society. Thank you yes. so much. Um, Farouk Ibrahim Yahya Esquire. I'm, I'm, I'm trying so much not to put the barrister in front because you're <laughs> really you one. Much. So thank you so much for thank being you. here. It's my honor. Now, um, there's a lot of things happening and we did talk about what happens. Before the break, we're talking about what happens to a girl child yes. in a state where the Child Rights Act is not domesticated. So what happens? Now, the truth is, the law as we have it, even in those states where they are not domesticated, the law, in a way, can still protect those rights. How so? Based on the fact that they are human. And crimes, generally, some of these crimes, either in the south or in the north, we either have the penal code or the criminal code. Okay. And some of these offenses that we want to protect the girl child against are contained in this law. Okay. It's just that sometimes the scope are limited. But mm. in a way, it can still protect. Just like we have problem of yes. domestication of the back yes. acts in some states. But the truth of it is, like I was saying earlier, mm. once we as a people are ready to fight these violations mm. to a standstill, it will be easier. Because once we have that collective will, passing the law will not be an issue. Mm. But the problem is, the fact that we are still facing the issue of passing those laws because of we don't have that collective will. Mm. We are still divided. But the thing is, nobody will come and tell you that I'm against the domestication of the Child Rights Act or the Papa. They will not come especially to tell you. But within themselves, they know they will not support mm. it too. That's why we are still having issues of the... But truth of it is, once we have that collective will that we want to protect the, girl's ch the girl child, definitely, Protecting the girl child will not be an issue. Hmm. It's just that the fact that we lack that will, collective will, to protect the girl child. That is why we are still having issues of the non domestication of some of these laws that would want most states, if not every state in Nigeria, to domesticate. I, I'm happy that you talked about, you know, we being human first and we need to protect the rights of the girl child because if we bring up girls, that are you know that are not broken that can stand for their rights that's how we have women and of course this is like um 
a continuation of the International Women's Day, educating people about their right, the norms and the culture, cultural beliefs, the religious beliefs that has, you know, put women in a tight corner, not allowing them to reach their full potential is actually a bone of contention. And that's, of course, we're discussing, that's why we're discussing it here. So now, like I said earlier, the, the court is the last hope of the common man. And some of these offenses, some of these violations come with a lot of consequences. People do not know about that. So as an individual, as a citizen of the country, my rights is being violated. Let's talk. How, how old is a child again in Nigeria? It should be below 18. Below 18. Yes. And let's say, for instance, I'm below 18 and some of these uh, rights are violated and I want to seek redress in court. What should I do? Maybe you have to be specific on some of these violations. Yes, no, the truth of it is, the first step to having the matter had before a court mm. is speaking out. Okay. Which is one of the issues we face currently. A lot of times, when this violation occur, people don't speak out. Sometimes the victim don't speak out, maybe because of fear, mm. preserving the honor of the family and stuff like that. So the first step is speaking out. Once you've spoken out, then, you know, we, the thing is in the court system, we criminal litigation, because most times one of, some of these abuses are crime, are commenced by different way, by direct criminal complaint, by the state filing a charge or an FIR against the violators. So now the thing is, once the matter has been filed, that's where the real contention begins. Because the truth of it is, the law sees Every person alleged of committing a crime has been innocent mm. until the court proves such a person guilty. Okay. Now, the only way the court can make a pronouncement that, yes, someone is guilty is with the presentation of evidence. Every crime has its ingredients. Mm. There are things you must prove before the court will say, yes, this person has done such crime. And after you have proved, there should be no defense available for that person. Now, the problem is getting the evidence mm. that will prove those ingredients. That's where the issue really lies. Like, if you could remember when I was telling you about an incident I was involved in. Now, this is someone that his children were violated, 14, 15, 14, 12. We had an interview. Six hours to when we were supposed to be in court. Oh, sorry, 12 hours. He, he developed cold feet. He were not willing to come to court again mm. that he had forgiven. Now, this is not a civil matter where you say maybe because of your forgiving, you're willing to... So, alternative dispute resolution can not work here. Yeah. This is, once it's a criminal matter, mm. it's for the court to decide or plea bargaining depending on the nature mm. of the offence. So, is there a statute bar for um, such kind of cases? Mm -hmm. There are no statute bar. Okay. Yeah, but it seems the thing is evidence is some evidences. Once you don't take them to court when they are still fresh, it affects the weight that we attached to such evidence. For example, someone was raped, he or she was not taken to hospital mm. immediately. Maybe she was a young girl. And it was after five, ten, fifteen years. It will be difficult for you to bring a result showing that when she was raped 10, 15 years ago and no, re no, re what if no examination, no examination. What if we have witnesses? No, now that's what I'm saying now. Now the thing is, some of these witnesses now, when it happened early, the facts are still fresh okay. in their memory. But after 10, 15 years, you bet, I bet you the facts, they can't remember it as vivid as they could. 10 years ago. Mm. And during the process of cross-examination, they could make some contradiction that would spoil the strength of the case. Okay, that's so uh, for that's, sexual offenses. Yes, yes. Now, when we talk about emotional and psychological kind of yeah. abuses, yes. uh, take for instance, um, some girl child are on the street hawking. Yes. And some are being abused in their house emotionally. How do you seek redress? You know, in this kind of society, like, you don't take your parents to court. You dare not Definitely. because of the kind of society Definitely. that we are. But if we need to stop this, what can we do? I believe the foremost thing we have to do is reorientation. Okay. We have, as a, as a people, we just have to come together 
and chart a way forward. Mm. Let's understand the implication of the way we groom our children. What are the guidelines? How should we groom mm. our children? Because the truth of it is, even the child act doesn't pro doesn't especially provide the penalty for violation of due to psychological trauma and stuff. Okay, like there's that. no specific there's no specific penalty. penalty. Okay. Uh -huh. So the truth of it is, we just have as a people come together, organize reorientation. Should understand? Educate, enlighten our people, especially those people in the rural areas, deep, deep, deep down in the villages. Make them understand the implication of subjecting their children mm. to emotional, psychological abuses and blackmail. The truth of it is, you like it or not, we face emotional blackmail as children a lot. Yeah, yes, especially yes. So, with our parents. With our parents, so mm. stuff like that. So we just have to understand the impact of such kind of violation on the children and see as a, pe as, as a people way of coping these excesses. Because once we get it right as the parent, it will be easy for these children to adapt, to withstand the abuses that we get outside. Because the truth of it is, if a child is abused at home, he or she will not have the strong will to face the abuse coming outside mm. externally. Because the truth of it is, our home is supposed to be where our last resort and support should be. If we are having external forces trying to fight us, we should be sure that once we go home, our family would give us the required support. But where your family is giving you a larger chunk of what you're getting outside, you just leave your ass. Should I say more of an IDP? Emotionally, yeah, internally IDP displaced. Displaced. Yes. And because you don't have you don't have a home in the strict sense because yes you have a home in the physical sense mm. but emotionally the home is not a place you would love to be if you have the opportunity the the rights of a girl the violations are kind of vast and that's why we are advocating for stringent laws that will protect the rights of the child but um we'll continue to advocate we'll continue to talk about it and we'll continue to amplify our voices so the rights of the girl child uh, should not continue to be violated in the Nigerian society. Thank you so much for being a part of the Thank show. Thank you very much for having me. And uh, we look forward to seeing you again talk about the rights of God's the girl willing. child and God's the rights willing. of women in the society. And that's how we call it a close on this episode of Law and Order. We need to stand for our rights and that of others for the vulnerable in the society. And uh, this program is being streamed live on YouTube. You can watch this episode and other episodes of Law and Order on our YouTube channel. For comments and questions, please uh, drop them on the comment section on uh, the social media handles displayed on your screen. My name is Martia Umar. I'll see you again on the next episode of Law and Order. Bye for now.